Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, uh, today we're going to discuss further into the laboratory project and now go over uh, further into the Bezier curves and look at part two or question two. And to quickly recap on my earlier video, on part one, the Bezier curves are the set of parametric equations. It has four control points, P0, P1, P2, P3, P3 with, with these coordinates, and the uh, intervals from 0 to 1 of the T parameter. And the, and the equations look something like this, where you have x equals 2, this big giant equation, where each term you have an x0, then it goes to x1, x2, x3, and this 1 minus t cubed, then it becomes squared, then it becomes power 1, and then it vanishes on the right side. And in the middle, you have three coefficients. And the t here uh, becomes squared, and then cubed, and, at, and initially it has t to the power of 0 is just 1. And the y equation is exact same, but you just replace the x with a y on each of these uh, parts. And then you just sum all those up. And then in question one, I graphed this for these specific control points, and I'll show you that in a bit. And, and also I uh, graphed the lines uh, from each of these control points uh, together, as well as the Bezier curve. And now look at question two. So question two states, from the graph in problem one, it appears that the tangent at P0 passes through P1, and the tangent at P3 passes through P2, and we're asked to prove it. So let's quickly recap on question one to first understand what question two is asking. So this is how the Bezier curve looked like. That's this in red. And these are just line segments of, of the control points. This one's at P0, this is at P1, this is at P2, and this is at P3. So what we're asked is, right here, it says from the graph in problem one, it appears that its tangent at P0 passes through P1, and likewise for uh, at P3 through P2. In other words, what it's saying, if you draw the tangent line, because this P0 is on this curve, if you draw tangent line on this, and it appears here, if you look at it, it's passing through this exact point. In order to do that, that means that the tangent here so at the slope here, dy over dx must be equal to the slope here, m. So this is the average slope like that, m like that. Where uh, these coordinates, this one's just x1, y1. And then at p0, we have, yeah, this is p0, we have uh, x0, uh, y0. And uh, likewise here, I'm going to call this m1. And then here, for the second part, we have the slope on this one, m2. And that is uh, from, again, uh, the, the tangent line at the p3 point, or x3, y3, like that. And its tangent goes through it. It appears like it. And I'll show you how to prove it. This one's x2, y2, like that. So let's look at this uh, line first, p0 to p1. And also I want to state that at this point, we have t is equal to 0. So that's a parameter, as I showed in, in the part 1. And then at this point, we have t is equal to 1. So let's look at this. Let's look at t0 initially. So we have question, yeah, question, uh, whoops, question 2. So question 2 we have, let's look at, uh, at t is equal to 0 first. So at this point, what we want is, well, we want uh, we want dy over dx, or the tangent, or the derivative of the tangent line, to be the same as its overall average slope, equals to m1, which just equals to slope of line, I'm going to write line p0 to p1, which uh, it just equals to, well, for completeness sake, just write rise over run. That's just equal to delta uh, y over delta x. So just to change uh, from, from here to here, the increase of it, for example, all the way here is our delta y. And then the delta x is all the way across like that, delta x. Yeah, this is for uh, just for completeness six. So we have that. And that just equals to well, the difference in the y coordinates and then divided by the difference in the x coordinates. So what this equals to, what we want is uh, y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. 
So this is what we want to prove. If we can prove this, or we show that this is this, then what we have is uh, the proof that the tangent is actually the same, or goes through that point P1. So to do this, well, let's look at the derivative. So recall the derivative for parametric equations, dy over dx, as I showed in my earlier video, I'll put the link in the description below on tangents and parametric curves. It's equal to dy over dt divided by dx over tt, or the derivative dy over dx, or the tangent line in the xy coordinate system is, is equal to the derivative of y in terms of t divided by the derivative of x in terms of t, where the bottom one can't equal to zero, otherwise we have a, a divided by zero or a not defined number, etc. So let's write down our parametric equations. First of all, x is equal to x zero, and recall then we have one minus t cubed, plus we had the three, this one, then let me see if I remember, so x three x zero, then we have a t, this is t to the power of zero, t to the power of one, or just leave it like that. One minus t becomes squared, plus three, uh, and actually oh, this is not x zero, this is x one, three x, two now, t is squared, now we have one minus t, and then we have the power of one, let's remove the one, and then we have x three, and then t to the power of three, and this one's to the power of zero, so that just vanishes, and just double check, let's see if our memory got it right, yeah, x zero, one minus t cubed, then three x one t, one minus t squared, three x two, t squared, one minus t, x three, t three, let's see, and it's exactly the same here, just did, did that off my memory like that. So yeah, that is our equation, and for the y, it's the exact same thing, but all we do is replace the x with a y. So y zero, one minus t cubed, plus three, y one, t, one minus, write a t better, one minus t squared, plus three, y two, t squared, one minus t, plus y three, t cubed. So now let's look at our derivative. Let's look at the uh, parametric equation dy over dt first, or actually instead dx over dt, just over there. So dx over dt is equal to the derivative here. Derivative in terms of t, this one is a constant, that just becomes x zero. This three goes down, then we have a one minus t squared, and then using chain rule, we have to multiply derivative of negative uh, t, which is, well, or one minus t, that's gonna be negative one. So we put a negative there in front, and then we have plus on this side. Now using product rule, derivative of t is just one. So we have three x one, one minus t squared, and then we have to use product rule, derivative of this is gonna be, well, we have three x one t, and then bring this two down, that becomes a six, one minus, uh, two times three is six, one minus t, like that, then we put a negative, because it's chain rule, like that, and now the next one is looking at this case here, that's gonna be plus three x two, and then this, this t squared, bring the two down, that becomes two times three is six, and then becomes t, we minus a power, one minus t, and then we, using the product rule, do it on this one, derivative of this, that's just negative one in front. So that just becomes negative three x two t squared, and then this part right here. Yeah, this part uh, right here, the derivative is, well, the three goes down, plus three x three, and the t just becomes a square, which is minus a power. So that's what we have. We could simplify it further, but I'll stick to here. And now what we know is that, what we wanna know is at t is equal to zero. So at t is equal to zero, zero, we can just plug this inside this derivative. So plug that in, this becomes, well, one minus zero is just one, and then it's squared is just one. So this whole thing is just one. And then this part right here, this is just, uh, this is one as well. And then this part right here, this is, there's a t there, so it becomes zero. This whole thing goes to zero. This goes to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, whatever there's a t by itself like that. So all we're left with is uh, dx, let's move it here, dx over dt is equal to negative three x zero, that's one, and then we have plus three x one. And we could factor this out and move it around, this equals to three, take the three out, this is gonna be x one, move it in front, minus x 
zero like that. So that's what we have there. And, and uh, yeah, so that's what the derivative dx over dt is. And now what we know is likewise for the y coordinate or um, for the y function dy over dt, it's the exact same thing. Remember, all we're doing is replacing x with y. So we'll get the exact same final answer, but replace x with y. So this equals to 3 y1 minus y0, like that. So then we could combine these together. So combine these together, dx over dt is equal to, remember, dy over dt over dx over dt. So combine these, this equals to 3y1 minus y0 over 3. This one is, yeah, this, this equation here goes into there, and this one goes into here, etc. And this is, becomes 3x1 minus x0. The threes cancel. We're just left with y1 minus y0 over, now we have x1 minus x0. And there is our derivative like this. This equals to, well, just m1. Remember our m1 is just y1 minus y0 divided by x minus x0. And this is what we wanted. So this is m1, like that. So what that means is this equals to m1. So we've just proven it. That's the exact same thing. So that means the tangent line is the exact same as the average slope. So, it is, it's so the tangent at p0 does, in fact, uh, you could draw a line directly through it all the way to p1. Yeah, so that is our slope m1. And now let's look at the second one, m2. That's from the tangent line at p3 all the way to p2. So, so let's look at that. And that's ex is basically the exact same thing. Yeah, the derivative, it's going to be well, pretty much the same case. Let's look at this like this. So similarly, similarly, it'd be very similar at t equals to 1, because that's what the parameter is at this point here, is t equals to 1. And now the rise over 1, we have this p3 minus p2. And when we could do is subtract the y3s, uh, from the y2 to get the delta y, and then the delta x is for difference between x3 and x2, etc. And we're looking at, it, uh, at this one here because this one, this p3 is further down from p2 because t is higher. That. So that's a t is equal to 1. So t equals to 1. We already have the dx over dt formula like this. So let's just plug it in to get dx over dt. So at t is equal to 1 we have dx over dt is equal to, and let's see what happens here. When you plug in 1 here, uh, what happens is all of these cancel. When you plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0. All we're left with is the only thing that doesn't cancel is this here. This t squared becomes 1, and then this t squared uh, becomes 1 as well. Yeah, so all we're left with is negative 3x2, and then plus 3x3. So we get negative 3x2 plus 3x3, which equals 2. Then we could just factor this 3 out, x3 minus x2 like that, and move the 3 in front. So that's what we have there. And likewise for the dy over dt, it's the exact same thing. dy over dt is equal to. Uh, the exact same thing, we just replace it. Because the, the, the equations are the exact same, but different. Uh, instead of x, we have y. So y3 minus y2, like that. And then we combine this d. Uh, and then we look at the derivative or the tangent line or the slope of the tangent. dx over d, I mean dy over dx, not dx over dt. So dy over dx is equal to, so 3, this is uh, right here, dy over dt, 3 minus y3 minus y2 divided by this one right here, 3. And then we have x3 minus x2. The 3's cancel. We're left with y3 minus y2 over, uh, over x3 minus x2. So this is, again, the same exact thing. This is just our delta y over delta x. That's just our slope equals to m2 like that. So I'll just uh, highlight this entire thing, where basically m, m2 is equals to slope of line 
and I'll just call this P3, P2. Yeah, or P2, P3, doesn't matter. I'll just write from line, uh, line P3 uh, to P2, like that. Just, yeah, I'm not sure exactly the direction, or I think it might even be the other way around. But uh, regardless, it's just, um, yeah, just the, the slope is going to be the same here. So that is our slope there, and with the convention, I believe it would be, if for this particular case, the slope would be positive. Yeah, the slope would be positive because this x3 is less than x2, so we have a negative, but y3 is also less than negative uh, than y2, so that's going to be a negative delta y, a negative delta x, so we have a positive slope like this. This one's going to be greater than zero, uh, I believe. So anyways, that's all for today, and as you can see, the slope is the same, the tangent is the same, and we've just proven uh, part two. So that the tangent line here, is, it connects to this line I'm um, to this point, and this one from here connects to this one. Anyways, this is all for today. If you learn, it's a pretty extensive video on part two, and later parts will go over part three, four, five, etc. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll dive into deeper into these Bezier curves, which is quite amazing. I believe this is used in a lot of computer aided design and also printing uh, letters and other stuff that people just take for granted because their computer does it. And they, they use a lot of these uh, calculations in the back end. Anyways, all for today. If we learned, like always, uh, yeah, you could stay tuned. Yeah, like always, you can download the exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.